I'll start with a short discussion on manufacturing. Next, I use a prototype company to demonstrate the correlation between your ability to produce a quality product, Sigma, and your ability to create a profit, ROI. I'm going to discuss the complexities of Toyota. Toyota is able to consistently build a car, each made of 30,000 parts, and it does not fail. Lastly, I demonstrate what it will take for your manufacturing company to ready themselves for the competitive future. Today's manufacturing is constantly under stress to improve. The only cost-cutting solution options are to reduce employees and or automate. Costs must continually drop. If you roll through per yield for a product generation is less than 97%, can you remain competitive? Management must own the vision for the future. Manufacturing environments are static. Change represents a threat. This will lead to manufacturers moving offshore to cut costs. Competition will constantly steal business based on price. Staying in business gets harder every year. Manufacturing business in the future will treat the company as a system. Continually remove process activities that a customer is unwilling to pay for and improve every process every day. Don't just implement Lean Six Sigma, but operate your business like Toyota. It starts with customers and suppliers and ends with customers. Create a maniacal focus on the value you bring your customers. A healthy manufacturing system will constantly improve by increasing efficiency, be robust to withstand unanticipated changes, and agile to change quickly in your dynamic environment. You will increase market share, EBITDA, and operating margins to the detriment of your competitors. There are lots of what Lean Six Sigma refers to as waste, of which defects are one. Let's characterize defects. Some are obvious and some are hidden. Toyota stops their assembly line every time they come across an obvious defect. They hope that this will remove defects that become hidden later. Defects will sometimes disable product functionality and other times they won't. For instance, a simple failed lamp can render a gauge inoperable, whereas one failed lamp out of two for a gauge is not a critical failure. A defect may require you to junk the whole product or the defect may have a minimal impact. Defects, such as stained material as part of an airplane seat, are just cosmetic and do not change the functionality of the product. A bug in a software program may lead to an erroneous conclusion. There are defects that are at the core of the product that cause product failure. This could be a ball bearing that is not exactly spherical. Over time, this defect will cause wear and potentially failure. The alternative is a defect that does not cause catastrophic failure. A defect such as a dent in a case does not affect other parts. However, a defect in an electrical device may cause a whole electrical circuit to fail. Lastly, defects can be costly such as a transmission failure or inexpensive like a pencil lead. Of course, some defects will fall in multiple categories. The point is that a defect is a word with a lot behind it. An ROI analysis is different for every company. For companies that produce more than one product, it will be different for every product. These are the conditions for this prototypical company used in this exercise. I assume the total bill cost of $100. This includes cost of goods sold as well as overhead. The sales price is $120. This results in a maximum profit of $20 for every product produced. To perform the study, I used a production run of 1,000. I used this information to calculate a company's ROI based upon different standard deviation levels. Crosby wrote the seminal book on the cost of quality. Unlike this study, he also included the quality cost of reputation. This study is focused simply on production quality and its effect on ROI. Using a simile line sigma assumes that defects are normally distributed. Increased sigma capability corresponds to a decrease in defects. A common manufacturing metric is defects per million opportunities. This study is focused on products. You can see that a 3.5 sigma production level leads to 22,700 defects per million products. Roll throughput yield or assembly line throughput yield represents a percentage of product produced without defect. You can see that the 4.5 sigma production capability has a roll throughput yield of 99.87%. The next column is the number of defective products that are discarded per thousand products that weren't shipped. Of course, it is possible to ship products with defects. That represents a reputation quality cost not included here. The number of defective products impacts both profit and ROI. Notice the cause and effect relationship between your production capability and profit. For this fictitious company, you'll notice that there is a significant improvement in profitability and ROI as your performance improves to 3.5 sigma. This company should make a large effort to improve to 3.5 Sigma. Past 3.5 Sigma may require an improvement cost that does not correspond to a significant improvement in ROI. Do you want a 3.5 Sigma company producing parachutes or jets? This is just a picture view of the table. It does demonstrate there are significant financial performance improvements between 2.5 and 3.5 Sigma. It's easier to improve from 2.5 to 3.5 Sigma than from 3.5 to 4.5 Sigma. The good news is that most of the positive financial gain happens by 3.5 Sigma. 
You see that the slope level is off at 3.5 sigma, but operating 3.5 sigma puts a manufacturing performance on the cusp of poor performance. Therefore, it makes sense to shoot for at least 3.75 sigma to add performance margin. Let's look at the Sigma challenge for a specific company. Toyota produces an automobile from 30,000 individual parts and a significant amount of those parts are from suppliers. This means that Toyota has a very close relationship with the quality capability of their suppliers. An automobile is a complex product comprised of seven systems and the production requires 18 hours from start to finish. When Toyota produces an automobile, the 30,000 parts make up about 100 subsystems. The subsystems are assembled to make a car. Look in the oval of failed products per 1,000. How many part failures are acceptable out of 30,000 or one car? Toyota cars are without a doubt the best cars in the world. There are a lot of things that go into being a best car, but one of the important ones is quality. Six of the top 10 models that continue to be operated by the original owner after 15 years are Toyotas. If you want to understand the value of quality and defect eradication, operate your company like Toyota. Toyota looks at their business as a system. The first step to assembly 30,000 defect-free parts into a car requires guiding principles. Another way to think about guiding principles is that they are a roadmap that guides employees and management and operations. By defining value, every employee at Toyota is able to detect activities that do not add value. This is a necessary step towards operational excellence. Focus on the value you deliver to your customers. A value stream contains every process that is involved between customer order and customer delivery, and with this you attain what W. Edward Deming refers to as profound knowledge. Every manufacturing line should have a value stream along with business subsystems that have poor performance or are critical to business success. Value stream performance is what's important, not process performance. A value stream gives you the ability to select which processes whose improvement leads to value stream performance improvement. Now that you have profound knowledge of the value stream delivery process, it's time to create flow wherever you can. Flow means that there is no time loss between when the upstream process passes the product to the downstream process. If flow is not possible, then wherever possible, implement pull systems. This means that the downstream process requests the product from the upstream process. This is much more efficient than push, where every department just does their thing as fast as possible, regardless of the impact downstream. Toyota's secret is that their employees generate 11 continuous improvement ideas per year per employee. That's almost every employee generating one improvement idea every month. These ideas are not just improvement, but improvement in a company benefiting direction. Once you've built your value streams and implemented your continuous improvement program, system improvement is measured through metrics. The first four metrics are value stream metrics. Knowledge of these metrics gives you profound knowledge of your system performance. If I was a CEO or COO, I would want to review these performance metrics every day. Tactine represents customer demand. It is the frequency of product generation needed to satisfy customer demand. It can be different on different days, different weeks, and different months, but it is critical because it drives production requirements. In a manufacturing company, tack time should be standardized as much as possible through customer demand balancing efforts. Value stream production rate compares with tack time and represents your rate of product production ability. Optimally, your VSPR will be slightly greater than your tack time. These six manufacturing performance metrics give you the ability to monitor a healthy manufacturing system. The first step is to recognize your need to improve by setting up an office of operational excellence. Next, select the most critical value streams to map, then map and improve them. These value streams represent the perfect area to initiate your continuous improvement program. The next step is to publicize results. Employees should understand that the business is moving into the future. Keep the processes going by adding new value streams and iterate again and again. If your data is normally distributed enough, then there is a whole suite of statistics that you can apply. If the data is not normally distributed, then there are non-parametric statistic methods to apply. Every business should have an improvement bogey. This analysis for your company represents the goal of the first wave of improvement efforts. The next step is to initiate the continuous improvement effort. Finally, let the whole company know what the company's improvement results are. On average, every black belt saves the company about a million dollars a year. Not all this effort needs to be performed with black belts. Some of the work can be performed by green belts. ROI and Sigma together give you a destination. Start your journey with profound knowledge of your manufacturing system by contacting me. I'm Jim Fitzgerald, a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt with additional expertise in innovation. Companies lead by excelling in either operational excellence, innovation, or customer intimacy. Every company should excel in operational excellence.